leaving downright buddy, buddy, buddy We shall miss the past, buddy, buddy But there's still buddy cats No, don't be naughty, go meet everybody Here on buddy cats I love that song And I love this month Because it is the month of love Welcome to BuddyCast. I'm your host, Nick Sorensen. Joining me is the love of my life, Miss Jessica Denoffel. And of course, our lovely buddy, Mr. Jonas Kane. How are you guys doing today? Great. Awesome. Yay. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. So, Jonas, you know, it's February. It's Valentine's Day month. It's a month of love. It's just a month to just be loving and positive. And I thought, what better way to kick off this month on BuddyCast than to talk to one of the most positive, loving guys I know. So, I I'm thrilled well, to be here. I'm so excited. Welcome back to the show. You did a fantastic job last time. You did a fantastic job on every buddy aid that we've had you on. You know, every time I look at this card right here, buddy, every time, it just reminds me to be loving, be positive. You know, reminds me of me and Jess because it's the two of hearts. And, and that's the most beautiful, and that's really what w the heart of what we're talking about today. It's about it's about love and in and, and love and kindness and, and sharing. Mm hmm. Most definitely. So I gotta ask, in all of your videos that you make for people, you say one note on there that I've caught, which is Valentine's Day is one of your favorite days. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Valentine's Day, uh, you know, you know, some people take me to task on this and they say, well, isn't Valentine's Day just, uh, you know, consumerism, buying cards and chocolates and overstuffed stuffed animals that no one really wants, but everyone buys, you know, and I say, well, that's that's part of it, I suppose. But what I love about Valentine's Day is it's a reminder of what is most important love you know you know the beatles say love is all there is and you know you know perhaps perhaps people can even take the beatles to task on that they'll say well there's more to life than love well yeah i suppose we can get distracted by all the things that don't matter but love if if we if we all focused more on love and i like to think that every day is valentine's day i i, I try and live that way to express love and demonstrate love for myself, my community, the, my friends and family, complete strangers, you know, how do we express love to them? So, uh, so that's why Valentine's Day is one of my favorite holidays because it's a reminder. It's a day we set aside that if we forgot about love every other day of the year, well, here's a second chance to, to give it another try. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of one of my favorite songs called Life is Better With You. Every day is not Valentine's Day, but you make it feel like most of the time. Yes, yes. Sorry. And then there's Maya. Sorry, that's my dog in the background. We wow. love. love. Uh -huh. Hey, we love dogs. We did a chair. We did a fundraiser for dogs here on Buddy Aid. Yes. I heard it said that. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, this is this could just be a nice fun story to tell, or maybe it is based off truth. I don't really know, but someone once asked why dogs don't live as long, you know, why they have such short lives. And, and someone said, well, it's because, you know, the purpose of life is to love and the dogs already have that figured out. So they don't have to stay around as long. <laughs> yes. 100%. Have you ever seen those? Like there's a commercial or like there's this short video I watched once where a human like, is going through the days and like it's it's this white human and every time something bad happens like he gets shaded in you know like but he it's not because something bad happens it's because he cheers someone else up and takes their negativity away like the net you know the black and he just keeps building like it starts at his like shins then builds up to his knees then to his thighs you know like as he's doing like he gives someone who's having a bad day a hug mm -hmm. he gives um you know like he you know, he sees someone who just had an argument with their significant other and like they get slapped and they have like, but then he pats them on the back and says, it's going to be okay. And then as he pats them, he's taken away their negative energy. And then he stops someone from jumping, if you know what I mean. So by the end of the day, he's fully, you know, he's fully covered. 
He's moping to get home, but he opens the door and his dog comes to greet him at the house. And his dog just gives him a hug. He gives his dog a hug and he just, and all, it, it all just goes away. It all just disappears all of a sudden. Um, yep. That is such a beautiful example. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So our co-host is just uh, moving spots real quick. So I'll jump on to the next question, which is how can we spread love? The dog story was the perfect story. How can we spread more love this month? Yeah, and I'm going to answer that by by touching on what you had just said, because one of the most important things to remember when when we're caring for others, when we're sharing love for others, is being careful of our boundaries. Because yes, sharing love in in in, in taking away the uh, the 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 stress or, or or helping to relieve the pain and suffering of others that's all part of love, but when we take that on ourselves, that can be a heavy burden. And one of the questions that uh, that we often get asked is, well, well, how do we how do we be in this world and help others without? putting their stress and anxiety and and darkness on us? Well, one of the answers, of course, is to have positive social support in our own lives, such as a dog or cat or a partner, friends, family, people that we can talk to. Uh, But but one of the the fantastic ways, and I'm going to do, I I wasn't planning on doing this, but I I have a dollar bill right here that can illustrate this perfectly. Yes. When we interact with with people in our everyday lives, it's easy to take on their stress and anxiety and in 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 causing negativity and strife in our own lives. And this is brought about by having our boundaries out of place, where we're discombobulated, where things just are not in order anymore. And the solution to this, of course, is to set clear boundaries, to be in this world and help others, but to not take on their stress as our own stress, to have that mindset that we're in this to help others, not to destroy ourselves. So by setting clear boundaries, then regardless of what's going on around us, even in the people, in the lives of the people we love or the, or the people we hear in the news, we're able to keep our own peace and stay centered. So a great way to do this, to help love others, is to love ourselves by setting those clear boundaries. That was incredible. <laughs> that was amazing. Like I said, our co-host just went upstairs real quick to relocate, but she'll be back. But you're right. It's all about loving ourselves. It's all about setting those boundaries. Because sometimes, like, you know, like I said in the video, sometimes it becomes too overwhelming. We try, we strive to help others so much that we forget about ourselves. Like, have you ever heard the Elton John song, I'm Gonna Love Me Again? It was at, it's at the end. Have you seen the movie Rocket Man? Oh, I have. So I probably did hear it then. Yeah, it was at the end of Rocket Man, like at the credits part. Mm-hmm. It goes, I'm gonna love me again, check in on my very best friend, um, find the will to build myself, rise above the broken man. Mm. I'm bound by any ties that break, oh man. I be and don't you know? And it goes like there's a bunch of other things, but then it goes, oh, 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 I'm gonna love me again. Yeah. That's what it's about because this month isn't just about loving others, it's about loving ourselves too. Hello, oh, she's back. Oh, hey. Magic. Love. I made her disappear, now she's back. Magic. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> okay, that is cool. <laughs> yeah. Honey, do you want to go with question number three? Question number three? Yes, let me see real quick. Let's see here. See, now she's the odds and I'm the evens. Oh. Okay, so Jonas, tell us about, about your Facebook group, the Hashtag Positivity Community. Yeah, so this group uh, was actually started by a friend of mine. Hashtag Positivity was, was started by a, a, a friend of mine. Hashtag Positivity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and. Yes. I, I started working with him uh, soon after he founded this group, and eventually I ended up taking over. You know, he uh, he passed it along to me. But what I what I really love and appreciate about the hashtag positivity community is it's a place. It's a safe haven. You know, it's a place for for positivity. It's a place for 
for for encouragement. There's so much discouragement in our world. It's a place to be inspired and to be motivated and, pe and people to come together to share with one another what they're doing to to spread positivity in their own lives, in their communities, and in the world, creating this ripple effect. It, I mean, th there's literally people in this group from all over the world. I think we were at uh, over 600 members right now, and and it's just people from all over the world. Every day, I I, I start my my day by by just posting some sort of positive and uplifting image with with uh, with an uplifting uh, you know message on it. You know, so it's in we. We are what we consume, you know. We, in, in a in a literal sense, we are what what we eat, but we're also we are what we consume. We we get this energy passed on to us, whether whether it's in the physicality of, of the food or in what we're seeing, what we're listening to, or who we're we're listening to, you know. So this group is really meant to be a positive force and influence in our world to to help people. Be stay engaged, empowered, and encouraged. Yes, yes. Which brings me to another question, Jonas. How yeah. can we spread more positivity this month, along with love? Yeah, you know, it, I I always go back to the same thing. Uh, in its kindness, kindness, and I'm going to qualify this by saying that there's a difference between being kind and being nice. You know, there's that, you know, the the idea is that, you know, being nice might just brush things under the rug, throw something into the closet, put on rose colored glasses and pretend everything is fine, running away from problems, trying to hide from it. But whereas being kind, it yes, oh, my goodness, everyone needs more kindness in our world. There's so much unkindness that we're we're not being charitable towards each other. And I use that word very, very very purposefully charitable, you know, in the, in many uh, ancient texts, the words that we, um, that we translate as love, actually its origins are from the word charity, you know, so we're not being very charitable towards each other. We're assuming the worst in other people. When we listen to people, we're not listening to, 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 to discover what's right and good about what they're saying, but we're looking for reasons to tear them down. Oh my goodness, it's uh, we're living in some crazy, crazy times. So kindness, it, it's not about brushing things under the rug, but it's about really addressing the real issues. But there's more than one way to say something. There's more than one way to address something. There, in, in one way, we can tear people down. In another way, we can address it through our words and actions and through our presence. That's a huge one, being present in someone's lives, even if we can't be physically present because of the pandemic, but we can be present through like, like this morning, I was, I was, I was getting some, some work done and I, I got a FaceTime from a, from a buddy of mine. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is perfect. I'll take a few moments out of my day and have some FaceTime with him and chat. And it, and it uplifted both of us, you know, right. whereas I was in the middle of, you know, kind of stress, you know, working on all my work. It was nice to have a little break. And just know that someone is thinking about me. And this is a huge part about being kind. And it's a huge part about, about loving other people is letting them know that you're thinking, that someone is thinking about them. It's huge. It's so huge. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I send happy birthday videos to everyone. Oh, oh that's not it. There it is. <laughs> uh, so the reason I do that is because uh, because birthdays is one of my other favorite days of the year, Valentine's Day and, and birthdays. You know, if, if you remember someone's birthday and you say happy birthday or if you go uh, or if you sing to them, that lets other people know that they matter. At least yes. one person is thinking about them th th that day. I mean, some people don't care. You know, they're like, oh, oh, they think that's silly. Jonas is playing the ukulele. But, oh, my goodness, a lot of people 
it means the world to them to know that someone thought enough of them to take a moment out of their day, even if it's just 30 seconds <laughs> to sing happy birthday. They're so appreciative and it, it can it can really change the quality of someone's day. And, 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 it's, and if they're on the wrong path, it can give them a little nudge in the right, in the right direction. 100%. And you're right. Cause how many times have you, you know, gone through something like how many people are out there that have gone through a work day or a school day and just nobody cares about my birthday here, you know, cause we're so used to like, you know, having a birthday party as a kid or all that stuff. But then we just go along. Right? But then all of a sudden we check Facebook the next day or we check Facebook later that evening. And like hundreds of people have written happy birthday, happy birthday. They've taken that two seconds to write those two words. Yeah. Happy birthday. And like you, you sent us the video. Me and Jess jumped when we, when we got our video. <laughs> Jess was right next to me when I got mine. I was trying to like, yes, got the birthday <laughs> from Jonas. Yes. It's like the it, golden ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, one of the, the, the things I get, uh, I get frustrated by is I don't know when everyone's birthday is, you know? So if I, I, you know, I, I wish I had like a, like a document where I had everyone's birthday listed. So I just do my best to do some homework and try and be a detective about it. But, uh, so if I if if you are a friend of mine, if you're listening to this, you're a friend of mine, and you and you know I love you, <laughs> but I sing happy birthday. It doesn't mean that I don't care. It's just I wasn't aware. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so I couldn't hey, it find it. <laughs> it happens. It happens a lot. You know, it has. Sometimes we do forget, and then we feel like we feel like a jerk afterwards. But then that just leads to a bigger present or a bigger, you know. Hey, let's grab lunch yeah. tomorrow or something. You know. Yeah. So it all works out in the end. It all, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes people even forget their spouse's birthdays at times. <laughs> yeah. I hoping, That's gonna I be hoping, pretty yeah. I was hoping Jess would get, was going to make a joke there and go, you forget their birthday one time. So, <laughs> I didn't forget. I was there. I visited you. I, I know. <laughs> I, was being, I was joking. Uh -huh. You're dating a comedian, honey. What do you expect? Yeah, true. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> But anywho, so, yeah. Um, oh, did you want me to do the next question? Yeah, go okay. for it. So Valentine's Day is coming up, and everyone is going to be sending out Valentines. Um, who do you think are some good people to send Valentines to? I mean, you can send one to your spouse, your significant other, but I think there's other people we could send them to too. Yeah, you know, uh, I have a quick story about that because for me, uh, one of the most significant Valentine's days was when I was in high school. And you know how when we're like in, in kindergarten or like elementary school where they take mm -hmm. a whole day where we fill out Valentine's Day cards and we pass them around to everyone in our groups, right? You know, so I those days. what's that? I miss days. those days. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my goodness. It was so nice when everyone was love. You mm -hmm. know, it, it was a fun activity, you know, it was really it really uh, created this sense of community and connection. But when we grow older, we stop doing that. And, we, and we're very selective about who we give Valentine's Day cards to. And uh, when I was in high school, I had, I had a major crush on a girl. Her name was Stephanie. And uh, I wanted to give her a Valentine. But, you know, teenagers being teenagers, you know, they want to do things or say things but they are afraid of the repercussions, what other people think of them. They're afraid of, I don't know, rejection, whatever. So I made a Valentine for Stephanie and all of my friends. <laughs> if you were in my social circle, you got a Valentine. And I made them out of construction paper. It was just a, like a, a construction paper folded in half and I cut out a heart out of another one and glued it on the front. And then I wrote something inside. It took nice. me so long to do that but Stephanie mm -hmm. got the only pink one with the red heart mm. everyone else got um you know just various colors and that that reminds me of a story i heard recently about weird al have you mm -hmm. heard this story about about weird al I have not. He, when he was in high school, he had a similar situation. He had a crush on a girl, and uh, he drew a, a pic. Apparently, he's a fantastic artist because in the story, it actually showed the picture that he had drawn. And he drew a picture of her, 
But then he was about to give it to her and he got nervous. He was like, oh, I think I should draw pictures of all my friends. So he did. <laughs> he drew pictures of all of his friends, but he was careful to make hers the one that looked the nicest. Mm. That's awesome. You know what else we should spread this month along with Valentine's Day? Charity. I know I've asked this question to you before, but for this month specifically, what charities do you think we should focus on this month? Well, um, I, I I have to answer this way. There are two charities that I specifically. Oh, Trent. Yes, I am. I am quite romantic, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Trent. Good to see you. I'm glad you're listening in. Trent is one of my good buddies. Oh my good. You know, it, you know, talk oh. about Valentine's. I, I I think I should send one to Trent. Maybe it'll be yeah. a, a maybe it'll be a musical Valentine. Oh. <laughs> Uh, me, so, and Jess still, me and Jess are still in trend debt right now. So yeah, truly we are. We owe him out a night out to dinner or something. Mm -hmm. Amazing. He's an amazing guy. You know, talk about, yeah. you know, he, he's someone who gets it. He does everything out of love. No rewards necessary. He's one of those friends. Like he's there. He does anything for you. All done in love. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And this is a this is a, a a picture that I contracted an artist to to make for me, and it's inspired by a poster by the magician David Devant. And David Ooh. Devant, this English magician, oh, from like the late 1800s, early 1900s. I might have the history wrong. Please don't quote me on this. But he had a poster <laughs> very similar to this, and his was it said, "All done in kindness." Uh, which is, oh my goodness, kindness. We need kindness. But I wanted it to say all done in love. And, and I also had the artist input um, different images, you know, that, that like like the rabbit over here is something meaningful to me. The, the lemon over there is something meaningful to me as well. The rose even. So I wanted it to say all done in love because as you know, uh, all we need is love. You know, the, the Bible re records and everything that, that, that you do, do it in love. And whether we're, we follow a religion or not, whether we're spiritual or not, I think we can all agree that if we do everything with love in our heart, then with the right intentions, then we're going to do everything uh, that we can to spread kindness and love and positivity into our world. So it's it's so important. And, and I know Nick and Jessica, uh, I know I know that you're doing it. Just the fact that we have Buddy Cast here, you know, you know, th this is you, you doing your part to spread love and kindness into our world and to inspire others. So thank you for doing your part. One hundred percent, buddy. One hundred percent. Going back to our original question first about the charities. Yes, yes. So so that also perfect tie-in because, again, the word that we translate as love actually has its origin in, in, in the word charity. So giving charity is one way to express love. There are two charities that I consistently donate my, my time, uh, my talent, and my treasure to, the three Ts. And one of them is the Massachusetts Boys and Girls State Foundation. And there are, so it's this program run by the American Legion. It's um, a youth leadership, youth, de youth development group. And uh, every state in the continental U U.S. has one of these programs. And what I love about this is it gives, it gives teenagers the chance, the, for, for, for many of them, it's their first time away from home, away from their parents. And it's also, so, so they sort of get a taste for what adult life is going to be like, even though there's structure throughout the week. It, it's a week-long program. Uh, so it's, uh, it really gives them a chance to meet new people, experience what life is going to be like after high school, and uh, it, it really get to know themselves a little bit more. So that is a group that I absolutely 100% support. And another group is called Climb for Hope. And a good buddy of mine, Andrew Berger, which would be, uh, he wrote a book called Clear Carrying a Flag from Pain to Passion. It's his story about how and why he started the group Climb 
for hope. And I've gone on two climbs with with Andrew. Uh, we did a climb through the Grand Canyon, and we did a climb up Mount uh, Mount Adams in in Washington. Here I am on top of Mount Washington. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Mount Adams in in Washington. But but they they climb mountains to raise money for immunotherapy research, which helps people with certain types of cancer and MS. And he has a very personal story about why he started this. I mean, we all know people who have been touched by 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 cancer and MS. I have several family members who have uh, have are are currently struggling or have lost their battle. So it's something that's meaningful to me because I have family who have who are now gone because of this, but I, I you know, it's something that touches everyone. So it's hard to it's hard to stay positive when when there's there's things that that we can do to prevent these things from happening. There, it's hard to stay positive when 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 we know that there are, are, are solutions, but not enough attention is getting to it. And unfortunately, immunotherapy research up until recently just hasn't had the attention that it needed. So through Andrew Berger's work. Climb for Hope, carrying a flag from pain to passion. Through this group, it's they they've sped up research uh, by by donating close to a million dollars since the organization has started. So it's been so. Those are two things that I'm passionate about because it's literally I, I have I have three missions in life. One is to help people survive, come okay. alive, and thrive. Survive, come alive, and thrive. So uh, that is so the so this group, Climb for Hope, helping people survive, coming alive. That's where um, that's where the, the the charity with the Massachusetts Boys and Girls States come in, and then thriving. That's where my work with hashtag positivity comes in. So uh, so to answer your 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 question in a long winded way, <laughs> those are the Not two charities. Not a problem. Oh, those so, are great. Yes. I want to interject a question before we both ask our ultimate buddy cast buddy questions. Your story actually reminded me, have you seen the movie The Bucket List with Morgan Freeman, and Jack Nichols? Such a good movie, yeah. Yes. Remember at the end when he uh, when they're on the mount when they're both buried on the mountain and the guy go, and Morgan Freeman narrating goes, I know he was happy with this final resting place. His eyes were closed. And he was content with the, with his final resting place because he was buried on a fountain. And that was against the law. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. My, that is, um, you know, a lot of people I think have nowadays are like, even with this pandemic, they don't, they're, they're taking their time in a lot of negative ways or something like that, you know? They're complaining. They're just at home. I think a lot of people could have a new opportunity today to do some things on their bucket list. No, don't get me wrong. I know we can't travel. We can't do all that stuff. But I wanted to ask you personally, what are some things on your bucket list? Ooh, oh, on my bucket list? Oh, my yes. goodness. Ah. I mean, certainly there's places I want to go. There's, there's things that I want to do, you know. So with my company, hashtag positivity, <laughs> I, I have this this grand vision of turning this into a, a, a regional, national, and global movement as an educational and, and training company uh, where, I mean, Right now, it's just me out there. I have my hashtag positivity community on, on, on Facebook. But, but really, if someone wants the presentation, it's me going out there and doing. If someone wants uh, an online course, it's me who creates the course <laughs> and, uh, and facilitates it. But my, my, my bucket list, uh, because you know, th this is talking about legacy building, creating, you know, really getting this going so that uh, even if I were to die, due to old age or due to getting hit by a bus or anything, right? That this positive force will keep going without me. That's, I have a sense of urgency about this, Nick and Jessica. I have such a sense of urgency uh, about this because 
what this company through this organization, what I'm communicating, it's so important. This is stuff that I wish I had when I was younger. So I really focus on, on young people, teenagers, young adults, but I'm finding that adults need this stuff too, because schools largely skip over the social emotional aspect of things teaching about mindset and you know goal setting and in in relationship building they i mean they they might might go over it briefly but you know it, it's not something that there's not a set curriculum for and that's where i'm coming in so i have a profound sense of urgency to get this this machine running so that when i die it's it's still going to continue on 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 this trajectory so that's my big bucket list again i the three goals help people survive come alive and thrive um if i can do that for even just just one person uh then uh then it's all been worth it mm -hmm. beautiful answer my friend beautiful and i love that message how you want this thing to come alive and thrive even when you're not the one doing it you know yeah, you know, it, it, instead of instead of adding, you know, it's multiplying. You know, it's it's uh, it's just being able to spread it. You know, you know, just just, just exponentially. Mm -hmm. Now, honey, I think let's start out with your ultimate buddy cast buddy question. Ultimate oh. buddy cast question is that number nine? Yep, number nine. Okay, um, sorry, just double checking. I don't want to make sure I have the right one. Um, what is your advice on, is that correct? Even though we already did that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can ask it again. Oh, okay. Um, so what is your advice on love and positivity? All right, well. We said today, basically. Well, this is, this is important because I kind of touched on this peripherally, but now I'm going to really hone it in. Uh, I'm going to share with you what I, what I call the five promises of love. Ooh. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Take a note. Are you? Oh, please do take out your notes. These are the five promises of love. The first promise of love is gratitude. Now, this promise says that it says, "Thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for walking by my side. I love you." And gratitude can be expressed in both words and actions. But of course, as always, words mean little unless they're supported by action. So that's the first promise of love is gratitude. So that's one way to spread love and, and positivity is to express gratitude. The second promise of love is repentance. Everyone go, ooh, ooh. This promise says, I'm sorry for anything I may have done now in the past and in the future that may have hurt you. I never mean to upset you, and I'm sorry. I love you. As with gratitude, repentance can also be expressed in either words or actions. And of course, the same warning uh, is the same, you know, to match our words with our actions. And also a secondary reminder can also ser serve us here. And it's that some people may see our actions and not understand what they are supposed to express. It's sort of like the people who, sort of like the love languages, um, you know, it's, you know, giving acts of service or giving gifts. That's their way of expressing love. But some people, they need to hear it. They need to hear, I love you, right? So, uh, so, so th those are, are important things to remember there. So that was the second one was repentance. The third one, forgiveness. This promise says, I forgive you for anything you may have done now in the past and, and or in the future to hurt me. I know you never mean to upset me. And I acknowledge that we all make mistakes from time to time. In other words, I love you. Again, here it's important to sincerely forgive in our heart and not just in words. Because if we hold a grudge, then it's not a sincere for, for, for forgiveness, and it's just going to continue eating away in us. So forgiveness is a gift. In many ways, it's more of a gift that we give to ourselves. 
But when someone sincerely feels our forgiveness, oh my goodness, it can be such a weight off of their shoulders. Mm. So that was the third one. Number four is support. This promise says, I support your hopes and dreams. And I promise to do all that I can to help build you up. In other words, I love you. And this is going to be different for everyone in different, in different circumstances. Some people just want to be heard. So just being an ear for someone. Some people just want you to encourage them and root for them. Others may need a more hands-on approach with guidance, words of advice, shared expertise. Uh, they, they could take joy in knowing that you stand behind them no matter their decisions. Other people, though, they will want you to stand not behind them, but they want you to stand beside them, right? So, so that's so some different ways that we can show our support. Are you ready for the last one? Mm -hmm. These are a lot of promises, but this one I think is one of the most important. This is recognition. This promise says, I recognize you for who you are today, for who you were and what brought you to this moment and for who you hope to be. In other words, I love you. So whoever it is that you love, whether it's a family member, a friend, a colleague, a cat, a dog, a tree, <laughs> whatever it is, right? There, there, there's so many different different kinds of love, which, which we didn't really get to today. But whatever kind of love it is that we have, we can hold all of these promises. In this recognition one says to be proud of the beloved and let them know it. And let others know it too. Let, let them shine in their best light by recognizing them when they succeed and reminding them of their value when they don't. Mm -hmm. so those are the I five want, promises of love. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this so it's on recording. So that way, if anything, you know, ever happens in the future, she can pull this up and remind me of this. But honey, I'm thankful for you. I'm sorry for anything I do in the future. I forgive you for anything that may happen in the future. I, you know that you have my undying support and you know that I will always recognize you. I will always recognize you as the love of my life. So mm -hmm. I wanted that to be on camera. My heart is melting. Trying not to cry at the moment. I am crying at the moment. That's beautiful, Nick. <sighs> And it's the truth. You know, she knows that I mean it. I'm not just yeah, saying this not just, to be, just to be, oh, let's follow up with this. This will be a good thing for Buddy Cast or something. Nope. No, he truly means that. And he's honestly, like, throughout this whole relationship, that's who he's been. Um, so, mm. and same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, my ultimate Buddy Cast question to you, Jonas, is what is your advice for the world today? My advice, love one another. In, in all of these five promises, love one another. Be charitable towards each other. Don't assume the worst in the other person. Because here's the thing. Everyone is you in disguise. Think about this. If you, had, if you grew up in their household with their DNA, with their parents, with their experiences, with their nurturing and their nature. If you grew up in 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 their part of the world and in, in who they are, you would be them. Think about it. they are you in disguise, but here's the thing, they are you in disguise. It goes both ways. Nobody thinks they're bad except for like the really crazy people, you know, who actually have some issues. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the average person being average, all things being considered, no one thinks they're bad. Everyone is doing what they think is right, given their background, given their experiences, given their hopes and dreams. So we can all use a little more charity towards one another. And instead of trying to prove everyone wrong and yourself right, find that common ground. Find the 1% that we have in common. And then give that 1% your 100% effort. Because when we do, we're going to find that that 1% is much bigger than we thought it was. And yes, we won't agree on everything. But what we can agree on is this world needs a lot more kindness and love and charity in it. 
Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love. Mm -hmm. Honey, do you want to ask us the final question? Final question? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Next time I will study these beforehand, I promise. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> yes, I'm reading them off my phone. Um, mm -hmm. So 10, correct? Just making sure I read the right one. Um, so Jonas, could you, um, do you play us a little tune to close out the show? Oh, yeah. Now, I, I believe, play. I believe Nick had requested a song earlier. So uh, I'm going to play that song. <clears throat> Tonight, I'm gonna have myself a real good time. I feel alive, and the world turn it inside out. I'm floating around in ecstasy, so don't stop me now. Don't Stop me cause I'm having a good time, having a good time. A shooting star leaping through the sky like a tiger defying the laws of gravity. I'm a racing car passing by like Lady Godiva. I'm gonna go, go, go. There's no stopping me. I'm burning through the sky. 200 degrees, that's what they call me, Mr. Fahrenheit. I'm traveling at the speed of light. I want to make a supersonic man out of you. Don't stop me now. I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. Don't stop me now. If you want to have a good time, hey, just give me a call. Don't stop me now. I'm having a good time. Don't stop me because I'm having a good time. I don't want to stop at all. <laughs> That was awesome. That was good. And, and yeah. don't stop now, you know, because we're we're having a ball on 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 Buddy Cast here. I say that all the time. Don't stop me now, because this is a good time. Just give me a call. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, thank you so so much for helping us kick off February. It is truly. You're truly one of the most positive guys I know out there and truly someone I knew could help me nail these messages. Just reminding people that this is a month of love. This is a month of positivity, a month of hope, and just to remember those good feelings, to remember just to survive, come alive, and thrive. Mm. And most of all, to do what you said, the five promises. Be gra you know, Spread gratitude, repent, forgive, support, and recognize. You know, you absolutely are. This was one of the best episodes we could have done for this month. So thank you. Thank you, buddy, a million times. You are welcome a million and one times. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, anything you want to say to our guests before we sign off? Just thank you so much for coming on here. And actually, thank you, Nick, for having me on this episode. This was really fun. Um, yeah, and it's been a blast. And it... I can't talk. <laughs> when I was going to say, when Nick introduced me to you for the first time, I thought he is going to be perfect for the show. It, like, he should definitely invite him back for, you know, definitely more episodes. And when you went on Buddy A, too, that was amazing. So, thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I always have this card here, Jonas, the lemon card. But you, for I guess out there listening who may have not seen the episode, when you made this card appear out of a lemon and then sent it to me in the mail later, I knew immediately. I'm like, I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah, it's still up there. And, um, it actually makes the room smell really fresh. So. <laughs> lemon fresh. Exactly. But, uh, I love it. Yeah, that, awesome. card, that card reminds me of all of my buddies, you know? It reminds me of me and Jess because it's the two of hearts. But it reminds me of all my buddies out there. It reminds me that, you know, it's not just me doing the show. It's not just me that makes this show. It's people like you. It's people like Jess. And it's people like our viewers that really help me drive the messages home. Mm. So thank you. Thank you for this. I'll always have this and I'll always cherish it. And 
when we get the new studio all set up and everything, it's going right on my desk. So I love it. Yes. For all my buddies out there, this is my buddy Jonas, and this is my my beautiful woman Jessica. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode. And I have a hashtag myself, Jonas, if you haven't seen it. Go be someone's buddy today. With honor. Yes. We'll catch you all next time here on BuddyCast. Well, the days are going fast. Buddy, buddy, we've got to make them last. Buddy, buddy, before they've all gone past. Buddy, buddy, tune in to BuddyCast. Don't be lonely, make it, buddy.